It took me a while to get everything, but I still managed to carry it on my own. Satisfied, I walked to the kitchen to get some well-deserved leftovers. Maybe I should just end it. But can I? Maru continues mumbling, leaning on the railing absentmindedly. I walk up to him, tapping him on the shoulder. He reacts in shock. Be you. And what? <laughs> you heard that? Don't think aloud if you didn't want me to. Ah, uh, I don't know what to do about it anymore. What's bothering you? I don't think keeping silent about it will help any of us. Maybe. Let's say I went to a very pretty village once. I heard people were really proud of their home there, but that some ass exploited them. <laughs> some ass. I nod. He's probably talking about Senri. I'll see where this goes. However, when I entered, the people he lived with begged me to steal him away. <coughs> Sorry. Really? This was before the mist came, wasn't it? Yes. Although now I feel a little bad about it. Why so? I don't know exactly what happened between them, but I, I just fought him out of jealousy when I got the excuse. I didn't look further into it. I just assumed he was an ass because someone told me. I softly tap his head. That's bad. I... I know! But you know, since then he might have really turned into something vile. I don't think he can cope with the hate. And if I do the wrong thing, it might really get bad. Doesn't he hate you? It might get worse if you go and see him. I know. But if I don't, it'll get worse too. I think he's at his limit. He sighs, but then pats me on the head himself. Well... Thanks for listening, and don't worry about it. I'll think of something. I try to speak up, but he interrupts me before I can. You came for a meal, right? I think Liu Fan knows you're up to something too, since he told me to give you this. Let's go to our rooms and rest, okay? Don't... Don't do anything dangerous. I can handle this. He pushes something in my hands. It smells delicious, but I seem to have lost my hunger. Yeah... So this began because we hated him? Why would he hate him before the mist? Confused, I nearly miss Maru as he heads off the wave. Maru, one last thing. Hmm? I heard only other gods could seal him like this, so... Are you really... Without a word, Maru leaves. And eventually, I do the same. Lying on my bed, I turn around on my stomach and pick up the blade from the floor. Unsheathing it, it glows dimly at me once more. It's such a beautiful sword. I wonder if Senri enchanted it once. Why did he make such a sword when he had his own? Maybe he used two of them. The sword glows comfortingly. If only he changed back. I blink and sit up in surprise at my own thoughts. The story about Senri must still be bothering me. Sneaking out of my room, I head off to visit the sealed god. Back again? This is a lot earlier than the other days. Does something happen? As usual, Senri didn't seem to be doing much. Yet, he doesn't complain like he usually does. Nothing really happened, per se. Then what? You were ordered to keep an eye on me? Last time, I am your follower. I promise. Alright. Why are you so untrusting of me? Look around. I'm not exactly well liked by people including yourself. Why would I trust the curious maiden so easily? For example, what if another god wants to know whether I changed my mind or not? Asking a human to spy would be easy. Change your mind? I told you, they locked me up here because I was against their system. They want, me, they want to remain omnipotent and have people abide by their needs. As long as you humans are ready to pray, they care not about you. I've heard about other gods demanding offers, and the god on the hill as well, but... So you don't want offers or powers? What for? So I might compete with those other sad beings? If we can live together without someone having absurd powers, then I don't need those things. You work for your own bread. Why shouldn't I? I clench my fists, trying to restrain myself. How dare you speak like that when harming everyone in the village with your mist? An uncaring god will at least leave us alone. What's wrong? I open my mouth to speak, but end up remaining silent. I'm still missing something, aren't I? What am I missing? Be you? 
I look at him with surprise. What? That was your name, wasn't it? I nod. Then, why are you looking so tense? Because I don't understand you. Well, I don't understand you either, so... Hey, Senrei? What? Let's try being friends. Wh what Let's try being friends, because friends understand each other. Hmm. This time, he seems to be having a hard time choosing his words. His gaze rests on my sword once more. Is something wrong? Why do you carry that sword? My grandpa gave it to me. Could you hand me the blade for a moment? Giving him the blade, Senrei takes it with a bit of hesitation, as if he's afraid to hold it. After a while, he finally unsheathes the sword. The good as new looking blade shines in the dim light of the room. Oddly enough though, the glow seems to be gone. He hands the blade back to me without a word. Senrei? It's spotless. I smile with pride. I hate it. Hey? He just stays silent, but I'm starting to connect some things. The sword, the appreciation ritual, his friend... Hey, can you teach me how to fight? Teach me what you taught him and I'll see what I can do. Why? What use do you have of it? I can't explain it well, but please, show me. He looks at me thoroughly before making his decision. Well, fine. I'll teach you some things. Senrei draws the sword, handing me the sheath back, and places his feet far apart from each other. He's keeping a somewhat straight but ready position. Footing is important in a fight. Place your feet like this, like this, and never let them get too close to each other, or you'll lose your balance. Sliding his feet as he moves, his heels never leave the ground and his feet remain apart from one another. I'm not sure if you guys are starting to find this familiar. Make sure your heels stay on the ground for even better stability. Now for attacking. Senri went through the basic moves he could recall while I listened quietly. I remember now. The moves Grandpa used in the fight against the monsters, my own movements in today's ritual, they're the same. But there was one other person. My mother didn't just chime the bell. Every move Senri makes, I know by heart. But the last time I'd seen someone perform this so flawlessly was years ago by my mother. I vaguely remember her holding the sword this one time. Grandpa tried to push her into carrying it with her too, but she and Dad always refused. Then that day came when she went into the forest without any means to defend herself, and she never came back. Grandpa, you weren't the one who told me stories of the old Senrei, because mother and father had always done that. They loved the stories we inherited from our ancestors. Telling me about the wonderful times when the god lived among people and never punished anyone. The kind god who created monsters from some of our crops, so they would protect the forest as we picked the herbs and gathered food without worry. Yeah, uh, I remember Biyu telling Maru that the monsters came from nature. So, Senri was the one who actually- apparently Senri was the one who created the monsters. Someday he would return. And then this place would be as beautiful as it once was. I pushed those stories away because they spoke fondly of their murderer. But actually, I always kept dreaming, didn't I? Just like my parents. The white prayer quietly floats by, yet I feel as though it only confirms my thoughts. Our ancestor passed down this dance, so everyone knew how to fight and how Senrei would fight. I watch Senrei as he keeps explaining. Mother and father couldn't end the dream. Does that mean it's my responsibility to put an end to this? Uh, I'm so sorry. I pick up the sheets from the floor but drop it again. My hands are shivering too badly. Hey, what's wrong? Why are you crying? Wiping my eyes, I managed to pick it up this time. S sorry, I have to go. I walk away with the sheath in my hands. Be you, your blade. I stop. Hesitantly, I turn and start walking back towards Senrei. It's up to me to wake us up. We've dreamt for too long. If I can take him off guard here, then... He hands me the sword back. The screen closes, but I can still see his silhouette from inside. He's close. I lift the blade, pointing it at his back, and stop. 
Staring at my sword, I don't understand it. In my hands, the sword is still glowing with a faint white light. Please don't. I stare in shock at the blade. What's going on? These words aren't mine. Say, be you? Snapping me back to attention, I look up from my sword. I hesitated for too long. My chance is gone. I put away the sword and move forward. Let's be friends. Why? Because then I can understand you too. And maybe I can help you. I haven't helped anyone in a long time, and I just thought having a friend again would be nice. Don't harm him. Please. Fine. I don't know whose voice you are, but I want the truth in return. I won't walk away like everyone else is doing. Senrei, please tell me. Why did your friend betray you? Look, that's none of your business. It is my business. Why? Your friend is my ancestor. That's why I have this blade. Why would someone who betrayed you build a shrine in your name? Tell me. Fine. Do you know what happened? He opens the screen with a strong pull. We fought the god terrorizing his village. We fought long and hard, but in the end we were victorious. The cowardly god tried to beg for mercy so he could escape and return another time. I killed him, of course, but afterwards my friend asked me if we shouldn't have spared him. He was willing to end his life to stop this tyranny. When I suggested to him my plans to liberate neighboring villages, they made up excuses not to. Even when a close by god was weakened, they subtly tried to stop me. Perhaps they were afraid. Perhaps after finding peace again, my friend and the others were afraid to lose it. But they sold me out, didn't they? I can feel my sword from here, so close by. If someone would give it to me, I could free myself. But no one, no one did. For years, for centuries, everyone ignored me and hid me from the outside world, keeping my sword just out of reach. The prayers changed that day too. Everyone I had considered a friend showed their true colours. Except for one. My friend found me and visited. But then when he saw me, he turned around and abandoned me as well. I didn't bother listening to prayers since then. The blade you carry. Before I was sealed, I had adjusted it so my former friend could fight gods with it. Gods who terrorized people. The sword can cleave even the best armor and will never wear. If I were to die, another god would likely come visit them. But this would be more than enough to defeat them. I made him swear to use it if a horrible god would ever make the people suffer again. But in the end, he didn't use it. This is the final proof of his betrayal to me. How do you know for sure? He takes the sword from me. As the enchantment is my doing, it carries some of my powers. For example, faster than I could follow, he slashes through one of the black lights surrounding him. At the place where the sword was hit, a deep black was formed. It draws a little within from whatever was hit. If blood was drawn in this, with this sword, it would be stained forever crimson on that spot. But he betrayed me, just like everyone else. The sword was spotless. You can take this accursed sword back. It's yours now whether you want it or not. I take back his friend's sword and take a good look at it. Why didn't you use it? At the very least, you could have killed Senrei with it. All the mist would have stopped. He's the only one torturing us now. But you, mother, everyone, you all let him live. The white prayer still lingers around me, floating delicately through the air. Hope. Is that it? Can I forgive him after all he has done? He's done some pretty terrible things, but it's not like he didn't do it without a reason. So I will try to bring him back. He has done some horrible things, but from the way he acts, from the way he talks, does he realize himself why we're keeping him locked up? What he's doing to us? Many people before me must have hoped for his recovery, but they were too scared, too angry at him, weren't they? I will tell him the truth. All I can hope for is that he can accept it. Senre. What? I know what went wrong between you and the others. Because I have met a joyful god who was once in the wrong too. He's sorry for his actions, and I will fight those who try to harm him. 
You seem to have a long history with other gods before you met your friend and the other villagers. You couldn't see what they were seeing that day. See what? Gods aren't without flaws, but you judge them all the same, Senre. While your friend saw how afraid his oppressor was in the end, you could only see your own hate. They tried to stop you from attacking the other gods indiscriminately, but you didn't listen. So when some other god came because of your actions, they did the only thing they could do to save you and locked you away. Everyone's trying to help you, but you just call them a traitor and don't listen to them. Senre doesn't respond. Instead, he just laughs. A hollow, empty laugh. <laughs> Try to help me. Have you lost your mind? You're just like them. You don't care at all. If you could kill me, you'd do so in a heartbeat. Weren't you just saying right now that you wanted to be my friend? Then stop and listen for a moment. Enough. I've tried, enough, I've tried it enough times. Look where it got me. If everyone hates me, I'll hate them back. I won't let you abuse my trust and friendship again. The mystery is jet black and nears me quit quickly. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Why? If only you'd just have a little bit of faith in me. If you'd trust me. I run as fast as I can through the darkest of mists, which only seems to be growing thicker.